California may have a reputation as a liberal bastion, but it's long been one of the most secretive states when it comes to the police. A new law seeks to change that. SB 1421 requires police departments to make available long protected files of officer misconduct, including sexual assault and falsifying evidence. And it unseals internal records of what happened during police shootings. Without a doubt, it is a tough job. But just because a job is tough doesn't give you free reign to kill people. That's a big win for the families of victims of police violence, as long as the law holds up. No videos, the prostitute, nothing, nothing. Oh, it's going to My name is Mary William, and I'm the grandmother of Keith Bercy. Keith was killed by LAPD uh, June 10th, 2016. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Miss Fazia Amaru. I'm the mother of Kenneth Ross Jr., who was murdered by Gardena Police on April 11th, 2018. I'm Trisha Michael, the twin sister of Keisha Michael. I just appreciate everybody. Trisha Michael's been waiting three years for an opportunity like this. She's filling out a Freedom of Information request for records from the Inglewood Police Department about her sister's death. The title of this says, uh, Request for Public Records Regarding the February 21st, 2016 Murder of Keisha Michael. Sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Police found Keisha passed out in a car at three in the morning. An hour later, she was dead, shot more than a dozen times. The police claim she had a gun, but five of the cops were later fired, and the city settled a wrongful death suit for $8.6 million. The five officers are now suing over their dismissal. Trisha says what really happened remains a mystery, for her and the three young children her sister left behind. I was always smaller than my sister. Mm -hmm. A little skinnier face. Her face is a little chunky. And then she smiled a lot. <laughs> You're just blowing right past this picture. <laughs> well, no, but we're Disneyed out. You're okay. Disneyed out, definitely. Right. <laughs> right. Keisha was always smiling. Yeah. Two months after the law was supposed to go into effect, courts are still deciding how it will work. California's powerful police unions argue SB 1421 shouldn't apply to records from before this year. Ron Hernandez leads one of the first unions to sue. Well, initially, before the bill was passed, we actually challenged it because we just didn't feel that uh, getting deputies or officers' personal information out there, just, you know, carte blanche type thing, um, was the right way to go. Now what more we're concerned about is the retroactivity. The reason the retroactivity concerns us is because prior to this, there was a different set of rules. So you might have a circumstance where an accusation was made. And depending on what the accusation made, uh, the process of fighting it, um, might have been worse just having your name thrown out there even though you were determined to be innocent of the accusation in the end, just the dragging out of the whole process. What you're saying is that in the past, deputies might have made different decisions about how they challenged a disciplinary process, for example, under the assumption that these records would never come out to the public. Correct. That's exactly right. We think it would be fair that everybody knows from here forward that this new rule should apply going forward as opposed to stuff of the past. State Senator Nancy Skinner says that's just a misreading of the law. The union's lawsuits, they're contending that this law should not and is not meant to be applied retroactively. What was your intent? So I don't even use that term. Retroactive is not an appropriate term here. What SP 1421 did was modify California Public's Records Act. California's Public Records Act deals with a record is a record. And if you, a public agency, are in receipt of a record that is legally disclosable, it does not matter when that record was created. It is disclosable. What do you think the unions are doing? I mean, are they just sort of grappling and grasping for ways to, to kind of avoid having to comply with this law? They opposed the bill. And now that it was made into law, they're trying to see how they might limit it. Mm -hmm. Police have gone to some pretty creative lengths to do that. 
So far, judges have ruled against them in most of their lawsuits, but many are still in appeals. In Inglewood, where Keisha Michael was shot, the city council went even further, voting in the weeks before the law went into effect to let police destroy records older than five years, the minimum mandated by the state. James Butts, the mayor, says there's nothing to see here. The police department just asked for a routine records reconciliation. This one, they went back and they cleaned out stuff that was there as far back as 1991. Butts used to be the police chief in Santa Monica. He says he supports transparency. He just doesn't think there's much to gain from old records. Five years of data, if you can't figure out what's going on with five years of data, you need another job. What about the general public? Because obviously they have a stake here too. Absolutely. Don't they have a right to have information about the personal histories of officers or details about actual specific events? Oh, you want like the straight answer or the politically correct answer? I would very much like the straight answer. The reality is the general public doesn't care uh, about it. What they, what they want to know is that the city governing body is hiring a police chief that is an expert, that is a leader, that knows how to run a police department. In 37 years in law enforcement, I have never found a member of the general public that said, hey, I'd like to know an analysis of use of force of officers. Never happened. I mean, what about family members? We, for example, have met some of the family members of Keisha Michael, mm -hmm. uh, which was a pretty high profile case. Mm -hmm. She was killed here by police. Yes. Five of those officers have since been fired. Well, actually, they were, when you say since been, they were fired well over a year ago. That's right. This has right. been some time. And, and, and in a way, that's part of what's interesting about that case, because according to her family, they say they still don't really know exactly what happened to her. I would find that fascinating. I have, first of all, all the condolences to the family. But they're represented by counsel. Counsel has had access to everything, everything that the city has generated. So if they don't know, I would say that their attorney needs to share it with them. The lawyer for the Michael family says that's not true. He believes they're still missing a lot, including any video from the scene and interviews officers gave in the internal investigation. The district attorney's office declined to comment. Even though it took us a whole year and whatever months to go up there and fight and ask and keep asking and keep asking, we still don't have no answers to tell you the truth. Without that, Trisha says closure will be hard to come by. Came into this world again. We did everything together. Just alike, went to school, ate the same thing. Like, it's just, it's just, it's hard. I've never pictured this, that I would live this, like, life without her. It's a lot in me to go hard for, for mine, because it's a piece of me that's hurting, you know?